I've sort of meandered around the topic of uh, DIY speakers for a while now because most of the people who come to me for advice are college students. They don't have any tools. They don't have access to anything else to build a set of speakers, so I just ignored it. Uh, when you buy a set of speakers, here's a mic. Here's actually an original mic, a non-X. You buy one of these, you're buying this. It's done. It's finished. There's a grill. Some human being screwed in all these screws. Uh, the crossover, which would be in the other one, was built and soldered together by somebody. And you pay for all that. You pay for that service to be rendered. Whereas something like these, these are a set of overnight sensations that were loaned to me. When you, I'm going to have a, there's a kit, Parts Express. This is the Parts Express kit. Look at it in the description right now. Pause. Pause video and go look at, look at what you get. Look at the pile of things you get. All right, you see that pile of things? Yeah, you get the drivers in their own little boxes, the tweeters in their own little boxes, about, I don't know, 15 components for the crossover. I don't think you get this, actually. He said you didn't get the uh, terminal cap caps. You might have to buy that on your own. But you didn't get any screws. You, you know, you have, and you get, but you get the wood. So you get to glue together a box, solder together a crossover, which isn't very hard. You got to just read the diagram, know how to solder, a little, a little bit how to solder. Pretty rough. You can get pretty rough, and then seal the box and put it together. And you get to finish it yourself too. Which this one was sort of, he said he rushed it, which is why it didn't come out like he like he wanted. But you know, I kind of like it. It's got like a tiger stripe. Uh, of an accuracy going on here. I don't mind. I don't mind the look of speakers. I don't care if it's if it's red with a little bit of sanding. He'll get this straightened right out. But so let's get back to the point. So when you buy this pile of parts for a hundred and thirty dollars, well, what does that equate to in sound quality? Well, these micas, well, the mica X's at least cost cost eighty dollars for you to buy. That means that the sum of the parts. And the cost of the labor to put this speaker together is far, far less than $80. Because, you know, they have to make some profit somewhere. And then the middleman has to make the profit, etc., etc. Where this, for $130, you are getting pieces of wood. You're getting raw drivers. These drivers are like $40 a piece, I think. I haven't looked up in a while. You're getting tweeters that are, you know, $20 a piece. You know, I guarantee you that the driver and tweeter in this are not... 20 and 40 dollars respectively because then they wouldn't make any money on it so these are high vibe drivers these are really good drivers these are really good tweeters all the crossover components are beefy as hell because you know they cost whatever they cost and it's labor is you your labor so to buy this set of speakers if, if you someone bought the kit and then spent all the time to finish the box and assemble it and solder the crossovers together they should charge you no less than 250 dollars legitimately to do that so when you buy a hundred thirty dollar speaker kit and you put it together yourself you're getting basically half price half price for speakers that you would cost a whole lot more to buy than it takes to build now he said he put this together in about eight hours which isn't bad it, he you know that's with two coats of paint and you know he, he rushed the paint because you want to hear him you want to hear him oh god i got a kit you can literally leave these plain wood and not bother with anything but you won't. You're going to want to put your own little personal touch in there, paint it blue or red. Or I would personally go with like an eighth inch foam wrap and then get some nice leather, some bonded leather. Get a leather speaker going. No one's done that. Maybe even some denim. Get some old jeans. Some with a big ass. Just stretch it around there. Super 77 and on there. So now that we've talked about why you do this, it's why you do it. You buy $130 worth of parts, you spend anywhere from four, if you don't give a shit about the box, to eight hours to build, assemble, and finish the box. Again, there's no grills, there's no grill holes, because he just didn't put them in. He would have to go, and he'd have to drill holes and get these little rubber seats, and then he'd have to buy or build something like this, and then put it over there. So if you want to add grills, that's more time, more effort. It's up to you. The sound quality on these is comparative to the TX that I had literally an orgasm on video for. Because everything is so high-end, because these drivers are high-end, because the tweeters are high-end, because the crossover components, which I was tempted to rip this apart to show you, but I'm not going to dig inside this any more than I had to. The, the overall sound quality is superb. 
harken back to the uh, review of the Hoke on-wall monitors that I put here. So these are the best near-field desktop speakers. These have that same quality of sound, the near-field quality, but have low end. And the reason they have low end is because 4-inch driver, 4-inch driver, you're looking at quite a bigger box, certainly deeper. Not, not any wider, I don't think. A little bit wider. So you've got a long throw high vibe driver. You've got a giant box. It's got a huge port in the back compared to... I don't want to leave this on its face because it's got, again, no grill to rest it on. Little baby port, big monster port. It's just, you know, this is a well-designed speaker. See, someone designed this speaker. They're selling you the box. You don't have to worry about any calculations for that. They're designing and selling you the crossover parts. You don't have to worry about that. They're just not going through the labor of putting it all together. And so you do. You have to go through the labor of putting it all together. And when you do, you're going to come out with a set of speakers that rivals lots. As far as desktop, right here, near field stuff. If I walked into... Where do you go, Dayton? Sit. You have your desktop set up, and it's just a pair of these and a monitor. Probably angle them up a little bit on some Lorex pads or something. Or... It stabilizes. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much your end game for near field passive speakers. They also have a version of this that's two drivers, that's a, like a center channel version, which I would never, you never want to lay that down. You never want to have the two like this because then when you move like this, the timing's off. So those would be something you'd leave vertical. Again, cost of that goes up, more wood, another driver, different crossover configuration. But then how much would that be worth if you bought that? It would be worth 250 now it's worth 375 or something so it's all about how much it's worth in sound quality and these are worth a whole hell of a lots more than a lot of the things i recommend now granted not a lot of you have the tools to put things together and that isn't necessarily true soldering iron screwdriver you probably need a drill to pre-drill these because you don't want to screw that up uh, glue, clamps, honestly, I don't know if there's much more you'd need after that. I mean, if you want to finish it, you need uh, sandpaper, paint, primer. I'd primer first to get rid of the wood grain, unless you just stained it. I don't know what kind of uh, quality wood they're giving you if you could just run a stain over it. But yeah, you're done. If you have a machine shop or you have a CNC cutter, you could have a cut out a piece of aluminum that's like a cool shape around this. Do the grills. Hell, you could even get creative and put amplifiers in these. Make them powered monitors. You go to Dayton, get the little 15 watt per channel, sons of bees. Sons of bees, isn't that cute? Put them in there before the crossover, add a little volume knob. You can go nuts. That's the whole point of DIY. You could do it yourself all over. So, better sounding than, obviously the better sounding than the micas. There's a weird... I'm going to try to describe this now. Phase. Let's talk phase for a second. Phase is when, like these speakers, my big Dayton stacks, have phase issues like you can't imagine. Because all three speakers and all three tweeters play all at the same time, all the same source. These are full range and these have a slight cap just to keep them under it. So if I'm standing right where my camera is now, and this speaker goes whoop, and this speaker goes whoop, and this speaker goes whoop, that one's going to hit me last, that one's going to hit me second, this one's going to hit me first. And they're going to cancel out because of where I am. But if I get all the way down here, duh, then this one hits me first and these two hit me slightly later. Just slightly. And it's good. And you get further away, obviously that effect comes, goes reduced, reduced, and reduced. So my big speakers do an incredible amount of good phase problems and that's that's you know, that's, a, that's a thing where if i sit here and i'm playing music and i'm staring dead center i hear everything i hear shit up and down and way back there and over here and it's not very easy to do that in a small speaker because usually they have to time the, the tweeter and the thing and they're, they're real close and that's it but with these somehow the timing between what this produces what this produces and where it crosses over because this gets cut off somewhere, the high stop, and this gets cut off in the, actually no, the low stop, and this one gets cut off in the high stop, and the phasing timing, 
may be slightly tweaked to allow for better depth perception in music. I know that sounds weird, but that's what I'm hearing. I'm, when I put these up, I hear probably some of the best center image I had when I do the, the recording test. One of the songs is just, you know, a person singing right dead center. And I've never sat here and looked and said, I can't tell the speakers are playing. I was looking at them, but they were just sitting still. And I was like, there's, that's where, that's where that person's coming from there. Nothing to do with these. So crazy, crazy, crazy depth, crazy, crazy, crazy center image, uh, j just soundstage up the wazoo. Very, very good low end. And the highs are as accurate as I care to, to play with. They might be a little bit on the, uh, not sibilant side, but after about an hour of real close, real loud, not real loud, but like loud, like you're listening, the tweeters get on my nerves a touch. They're not quite as uh, soft. I like a little bit of a softer tweeter. Which looking at that makes it funny. I like a little bit of softer tweeter, like the SX6. My uh, XRM 6.1s have a big soft dome, and it's just you know it's gentle. It's gentle massages your ears. Where these can get a little bit me me at you. So uh, you see, here's the thing: you can't get a pair to tr to try. You have to rely legitimately on me and my review to tell you to buy these and spend the eight hours to put them together. So I'm trying to do, a, a, I'm trying to sell you these and your time. Maybe a couple weekends. You don't have to do them one day. You know, maybe you just had a baby boy, and he's crying all night. You need something to do between warming up the baby bottles, build speakers. Maybe your wife nags you, build speakers. I don't know. Maybe you're bored at your job. Just push all that shit off the desk and start building speakers, and let your boss fire you, and then get a better job because you needed it anyway. You, you have to find either someone who has these to hear them. And here's, an, here's another problem, because the guy who loaned me these said, you know, do your yourself speakers sometimes don't get a good rap, because how good you are at making the speakers legitimately determines how good the speakers end up. If you do something wrong, if you solder the crossover together wrong, if your soldering skills aren't that good and it's a loose connection, or if you screw something else up, the speakers aren't going to be any good. With this, these speakers, the speakers that he put together, obviously the finish is not 100%. You couldn't sell this finish in a store unless you sold it to some crazy person. Be like, oh, Picasso just flung paint on these. And I pulled the one, had to pull one apart. And I haven't told him this yet. I'm going to see it in the video. I had to pull this one apart because on certain sections of songs, there was a resonance sound that was like, mm, mm. I was like, what the fuck is that? What the fuck is it? Did I break the speaker? I didn't know if I broke the speaker. And his crossover is assembled where he's soldered things together, like up in the air. And because they were sticking up in the air, little pieces of metal, they were, I couldn't, it wasn't coming out of the driver. I pulled the driver out and played it. It wasn't coming out of the driver. And it wasn't happening when I had the driver out. And I believe it was just the metal contacts from all the crossover bits sticking up and acting like tuning forks at certain frequencies. Very, very, very precise frequencies it was happening. So I went in there and I just twisted and bent down things and it stopped happening. So shit like that's going to happen because, you know, the Micahs, they built 22 pairs and they said, what's wrong with this one? All right, fix it. What, what's wrong with this one? Okay, now fix that one. And then one and one and one and then they produced 500,000 of them. Well, you're going to get these and you're going to get one pair and you have to do it right the first time or you got to take it apart and redo it and do it again and take it apart and put it together and do it again until it's right. But that's the best part. That's what you get into this for. I mean, you can get full towers. I hear the Dayton... Uh, T652s. You can get tower speakers for like 250 bucks. They sell you the kit, the wood, the drivers, and you get an equivalent to like a $500 tower. Because they're selling you high end parts, high end tweeter, high end driver, and the wood. And then you're just left with wood and you got to finish it. So this is a legitimate practice. You can do this. I believe in you. I believe in my audience can now handle this. You could handle these speakers. All right, I'm going to hook them up now and try to record them. I don't know how well it's going to work. It's been a while also. Yeah, they should have little grills. Little, little grills. I don't know how I would do it. 
And you can move the tweeter a little bit. Oh, actually, I think this came with the tweeter hole cut. But if you're a super, super do-it-yourself and you have a woodworking shop, you could literally just download the plans. Buy the drivers, buy all the components all on your own, build your own boxes to whatever. Because it's about the volume. It's about what, you know, how many cubic centimeters of air in this. And then you just make the box that shape however you want to do it. Make sure the port depth works for it, and you're good. You're good. You're good. So, yeah. That's all I got to say about these. They're excellent. Excellent, excellent speakers. You just got to build them right and finish them. And then you're good.